Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Sam. I am a licensed hairstylist. And in today's video, I am going to be reviewing the Dyson Corral flat iron. Is it actually worth the hype? Is it worth the high price tag? What is my opinion as a professional? And then I'm also going to show you how I use it to do like my everyday messy beachy waves. So the Dyson straightener, this thing retails for $4.99, $500. Now, what is so amazing about the straightener? Why is it so expensive? The big thing about it is A, it is cordless. You can use it without the wire and it is supposed to create less heat damage to your hair. I pulled up the Dyson website because I wanted to just read what they claim. They claim that it's the only straightener with flexing plates that shape to gather the hair. And they have videos and pictures on their website that demonstrate that. And because these plates, which I don't understand how it works because the plates don't necessarily look different from just like a regular flat iron. I mean, it looks different, but when you actually look inside like at the plates themselves, there's not like a huge noticeable difference, but I guess because it gathers all the hair together, you can just pass over it one time and it's supposed to create less damage. And you also don't have to put the temperature up as high to get the results that you want. This extra control allows you to create the same style, but with less heat and half the damage. So yeah, I don't know. I will put the link to their website in the description if you wanna go check it out and read more about it for yourself and watch the little video that they have explaining how it works. I will say from personal experience, because I've been using this now consistently since like the end of March, it's now the end of July, so about four months now. And I do feel like I notice a difference using this versus using any other flat iron that I have. And I have so many different ones at home from so many different brands. I have professional ones, I have non-professional ones, and this is definitely different from all of them. And I'll explain a little bit more once we actually get to the tutorial part and I start using it on my hair. It has a digital display. So you have the buttons here, this is the on button, and then you just turn up the temperature. So you can see, you can set it to 330, 365, or 410. My hair, I feel like, is a little soft and frizzy today, so I think I'll just do it on the highest temperature. And then there is a little lock, so you can lock it closed, and that will automatically turn it off. But let me turn this back on. We'll set it to 410, and you guys can see how quickly it heats up. It just takes a few seconds. I do really like that it's cordless. That is definitely convenient. I'm hoping that that's the future. There we go, it's already at 410. What is annoying about this though, is that the cord, it just hooks in with a magnet and it's not very strong. So if I am using it with the cord plugged in, every single time I do, it ends up getting unplugged at some point. I prefer using it cordless and then if I remember to, I'll just plug it in and let it charge after I'm done. For this tutorial, it's pretty easy. I just slip my hair down the middle and then I typically do like two or three sections on each side of my head. Depends how much time I have, you know? So what I've been doing recently that has helped my hairstyle last a little bit longer is spraying a little bit of hairspray on my hair before I apply heat and then afterwards too to really lock it in but you want to make sure that you're holding it at a far distance and you're just doing a really light mist so that it's not like getting stuck just in one spot um so this is the verb hold in volume strong hairspray so i'm just gonna grab one little piece from the back I'd say maybe like an inch and a half, two inches wide. You don't want the piece to be too, too thick because then you're not gonna be able to get a good enough curl. It's gonna be too loose and then just like fall flat. So I just clamp down and then I like to do them usually away from my face. And when you're curling with a flat iron, you can just twist and then pull all the way down. Um, that's one way that you can do it. But then you see how most of the curl ends up on the bottom there. So that's not typically how I like to do it. What I like to do is twist around once, pull down a little bit, untwist, 
and then same thing twist again untwist and then pull down so that the ends are straight because i feel like that gives a little bit more of like a beachy wave whereas this is like i don't know you can see the difference for yourself and you can alternate the direction that you're curling in if you want a more like PC separated look. I tend to just do mine all in the same direction, all going away from my face because I just like how that lays. And then that way everything like kind of twists up together and it just looks like really soft. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to go all away from my face. Twist, untwist, pull down. And I do like curling my hair with a flat iron more than with a traditional curling iron because I feel like you're getting heat from all sides so I feel like it holds better than when you use a curling iron and I also just feel like it's faster. Like I can just glide through really quickly with this and I don't have to like hold it like I do with a curling iron. Like I just move through really quickly. So there we go. That's how those curls look. I'm going to take that hairspray again and just give a light little mist while they're still hot. So it'll help really hold them in place. And then I'm going to throw those behind me and then let down some more hair. Like I said, I normally will do two to three sections on each side today for the sake of the tutorial. And I have time, so we'll do three sections. Give a little spray. So it's funny, with this straightener, the first time that I used it, I really did not think that I liked it because it's just really big and bulky. And especially because it's cordless, it's pretty heavy. Um, and it just felt weird in my hands, like compared to my really thin, skinny flat irons. But the more that I used it, the more that I got used to the feeling and the weight of it. And the more I really started to notice what a difference it made with my hair. So what I mean by that is this, like they claim that it doesn't cause heat damage. And I truly believe that because A, I have noticed that my hair has looked really healthy. Whereas before, I definitely was like getting heat damage. And this, like, I just don't feel as guilty using it because I can just tell a difference. When I pass it over my hair, when I touch it immediately afterwards, with any of my other hot tools, it feels really hot to the touch and it almost kind of burns for a second. With this though, I can touch my hair immediately after and it doesn't feel super hot to the touch yet somehow it still is creating the style that i want and it lasts to have it all the way up to 410 degrees and it not feel super hot to the touch is crazy and definitely not like any other hot tool i've ever used and i mean it works great for doing waves like this I've also used it just to make my hair pin straight and it works amazing. You literally, um, I'll insert a clip actually of me using it on my natural curly hair so you can see how easily it will make the hair like super, super pin straight with just one pass. It's really crazy. So I really like it and I don't love the high price tag. Unfortunately, that's like the one thing about it that kind of sucks. So one side of my head is done and I do like to brush out the curls and, you know, mess around with them a little bit more, create more body. But for now, I'm going to leave them as they are. Let them really like sit and settle, cool down, lock into place. And in the meantime, I'm going to do the other half of my head and it's just going to be the exact same thing. So now that my entire head is curled and it has all completely cooled down, you want to make sure it's nice and cold to the touch. If you feel any heat at all still, leave it alone because if you start messing with it while it's still hot, it's going to just fall flat and not last as long. 
So I'm gonna give one more quick spritz of hairspray. And then I'm gonna just start pulling the curls apart with my fingers. Same thing on this side. And then this is my little trick. This is what makes all the difference. I like to take some dry shampoo, preferably a texturizing dry shampoo. The Kenra Volume Dry Shampoo is one of my favorites. I also really like the Not Your Mother's Beach Babe texturizing dry shampoo. That's great if you're looking for a drugstore option. But I like to use this on clean, freshly styled hair. And I just pick up pieces and I hold it from a distance you don't want to be too close and spray out too much product in one spot but I just do a little mist of it and this not only will add volume and texture to your hair but it also will prevent your hair from getting greasy as quickly and I feel like using dry shampoo preventatively on clean hair is much more effective and just works way better than waiting till your hair is already greasy and then you know using it on dirty hair you can also spray it on the ends of your hair too to add a little volume and texture and then i just like to give it a good zhuzh like get up there at the root really rub it in I love this hairstyle so much this is my go-to because it's just easy and as the week goes on you know as it starts to fall and just looks more and more messy it just looks intentional you know which is what I love and I like having the straighter ends because I feel like that just adds to the beachiness vibe to it but also if you have a blunt cut like I do it just emphasizes your haircut and it just makes your hair look really nice and full so that is how i get this style using a straightener and you don't obviously have to use this one specifically you can use any flat iron that you have so final thoughts on this obviously if you couldn't tell by now i do really like this straightener a lot and i'm really glad that i got it but do you need it is the question i think that it really depends if you're a professional and you want to get this just to use at the salon on your clients Mm, I mean, you, you can if you're feeling bougie, go for it. I wouldn't. I keep all of my Dyson products at home to use just on myself. To me, I don't feel like this is necessarily worth using on clients. I'm fine just using, you know, my regular professional straightener from Babyliss. If you are somebody that you only ever use a flat iron on your hair once a month, then no, this is probably not worth it because A, you're not gonna be using that often, so you're not gonna get your money's worth, and B, you're not really causing that much heat damage to your hair anyway because you're doing it so infrequently. However, if you are somebody that you are always either straightening your hair or curling it or you know just doing some kind of heat styling to it on a regular basis every single week or every single day, then yes, I definitely think that this is worth investing in because it will create less heat damage and it will definitely help your hair stay a little bit healthier. Still, even with this, you wanna use some kind of heat protectant in your hair, of course. Um, before I blow dried my hair, I had sprayed some thermal spray. This in combination with some kind of heat protectant will definitely save your hair. So in that case, I think that it's definitely worth it. One thing to note is if you are a licensed cosmetologist, a beauty professional, you can get a discount on the straightener. So if you go to the Dyson website, on the top of the product page is a 1-800 number. You have to just call that number, you give them your license number, and then you can place your order over the phone, and I believe you get 20% off. So I would definitely, definitely take advantage of that if you are a licensed professional. So yeah, that is it for this video. Those are all of my thoughts on the Dyson Corral flat iron. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below. Have you tried this flat iron out? What do you think of it? Do you like it? If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel before you go. Also, go ahead and follow me over on Instagram for more hair tips and tutorials, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.